Good morning, YouTube. It is 5.03 in the morning. Uh, hope you're doing well. Today's topic is NASA's uh, Deep Space Gateway and Deep Space Transport. Way too early for that Higgs chromosome to space the electrons light. The magnetism of particles and momentum of receptors, radiation, are mathematical solution. Asteroid. What am I doing up? So, uh, this week, uh, NASA released their plans to uh, get into deep space. <laughs> uh, they've been talking about it for a while. They've, they've sort of hinted at what they want to do. Uh, the partners for the International Space Station have talked about you know what they want to do with the next steps uh nasa finally released something that has a little more detail than uh we just want to get out there so uh and they're they're calling it the the deep space gateway and the deep space transport uh so what are these things so uh what they want to do a lot of this is dependent on the sls the space launch system uh, which is basically just a, a big rocket, a heavy, heavy duty rocket. Uh, I guess now I thought that I had read somewhere that the SLS had done a flight test already, but maybe not. Um, they want to, uh, so I think I saw a flight test coming up in 2018, which is next year. Um, and then a year or two after that, they're going to use the space launch system to launch a space probe to Jupiter. Um, and then they're going to start launching uh, the SLS to build this deep space gateway. <clears throat> so the deep space gateway is a three-piece... Um, it's, it's a space station, essentially. Uh, it's smaller than the International Space Station. Uh, the three pieces are a, um, a power module, uh, which also holds so, uh, um, solar array, uh, solar panels, as well as a, a power generator, um, as well as a propulsion system, which will probably be some kind of electronic or uh, electric um, ion engine of some kind. Uh, so that's the first unit. Uh, and that'll probably go up somewhere around the 2023 20, time frame because um, I got to build the thing. Uh, and then the second unit is a, is a habitat unit that astronauts can live in. That'll probably go up around 2024. And then in 2025, a logistics module, which is probably some kind of command center um, for future missions, basically. So those three pieces, and what they'll do is they'll launch it from the Earth and it'll go into orbit around the moon. Um, and an orbit around the moon they're calling cislunar, uh, a cislunar over, orbit. And so each of those launches go um, to the moon and around the moon, and then those three pieces will attach together. And that'll be the deep space gateway. Uh, it's NASA's idea of having a permanent presence around the moon. Um, that, so that's between now and 2025, uh, and then that deep space gateway, uh, it'll assist with, um, missions down to the moon. It'll also assist with missions, um, beyond the moon. <laughs> that's why it's a gateway. Um, they don't plan to have it, uh, to have humans on it, um, uh, consistently like the International Space Station. They will send astronauts maybe once a year for like a 30-day mission or something like that to maintain the thing. Um, but it'll be that, you know, those pieces will be there in cislunar orbit permanently. Um, so that's the gateway. And then from 2025 on through 2030, I guess, uh, they're going to develop, uh, they need to manufacture and then 
basically they got to test out what they're calling the deep space uh, transport. So something similar to the gateway, but um, a little more robust, a little more beefy. Uh, so first they'll send they'll send a unit that's sort of a combination of the power unit, so solar array, uh, electrical generator and propulsion system plus a habitat unit. Uh, that combination will get um, created and then launched uh, into lunar orbit, cislunar orbit around the 20... I, I don't know, they don't really have many dates, they're just kind of saying out there. So after 2025, so between 2025 and 2030, um, they may send up uh, another logistics unit, but basically what they want to do is they want to take a year to test out that habitat unit in the deep space uh, transport. And they'll do that around the moon. So now you've got your deep space gateway, which has power unit habitat logistics module. You have your deep space transport, which is going to stay around the moon for a year. Uh, and I guess have humans, astronauts, for a year to, to do what they're calling the shakedown. Um, they're gonna test the capabilities of that unit. And then once 2030 rolls around, sometime after 2030, they'll send humans to Mars in this deep space transport that they've tested for a year. <laughs> um, which is kind of cool. It, you know, it's, we've been, like I said, we've been hearing about uh, sort of this stepping stone this pathway to how they want to get to Mars they were kind of thinking well they want to use the moon this plan shows that they actually do want to use the moon and they're going to use it to test anything they send to Mars um, which is kind of exciting it's kind of a cool plan um, problems with this plan uh, what problems are there uh, for, so first of all uh, they uh, you know they're, they're thinking about having humans around the moon kind of what did I say between between 2023 and 2025 um, which is what about about six six to eight years away uh, not fast enough so the Trump administration has says we're gonna send people to the moon and we're gonna do it in the next four years so there's some speculation that um, the Trump administration is gonna want NASA to speed up their timeline uh, but, you know, it, it takes a while to build these things. Um, now, you compare to the timeline of SpaceX where, uh, so SpaceX isn't, SpaceX isn't really going to the moon. They're, they're going kind of to Mars <laughs> uh, with, their, with their Red Dragon capsule. And I think the latest timeline I saw there is that that'll launch around the, 20, the 2020 time frame. Um, the capsule will go to Mars. I don't know that they'll send people to Mars. Um, but again, the SpaceX timeline is sort of more of this uh, rapid fire, get things done faster, do things more repetitiously, uh, get down that learning curve basically a lot faster. Um, the more launches you do, the more you learn faster, uh, the more mistakes you encounter and correct against. Uh, NASA's plan is sort of more of the um, uh, the slower, do your checks and balances, make sure everything is right, uh, which, is, which is fine. It's, you know, another philosophy, but it also means it's kind of expensive. And that's the other problem with this plan is that it looks very expensive. So uh, the SLS is this huge rocket. Uh, they don't have as many launches, which means it's going to be more expensive. Um, I forget who they have building the thing. They got to find builders for all these components for the Deep Space Gateway and the Deep Space Transport. Um, they do want to have partners, uh, which I think is very smart and I think it's very good. So the partners, uh, that currently are involved in the International Space Station, uh, you know, they've all wanted to, to do something, uh, some projects for lunar orbit. Um, this is their chance to jump on board and NASA is inviting all those partners as well. Um, uh, the other part about how expensive this is, is a lot of NASA's budget does go to the International Space Station. So what do we do with that station? <laughs> uh, 
again, speculation here is that they give the International Space Station over to private industry, um, let private industry control low Earth orbit, including this International Space Station. Um, that'll free up funds uh, and resources so that NASA can concentrate on this deep space gateway. Uh, what else? NASA is inviting, uh, so the partners, other countries, which is smart because, you know, a number of countries want to get to the moon. Who China wants to get to the moon and build a station there. I want to say the European Space Station wants to do the same thing. Uh, or the, the European Space Agency wants to do the same thing. And um, a space station in cislunar orbit will only help them. Um, so, oh, and, and then they also, they're also... Speculation is also there that NASA will ask uh, private industry to assist in the cislunar project as well. Um, so I think it's really exciting. I think it's a good plan. Uh, they need to flesh out a lot more, obviously. I think there's a lot of opportunity there, though, for, for, uh, for cooperation around the globe. And I hope that the other countries around the globe take it. Uh, I've said before, I, I don't know why uh, certain countries around the planet kind of want to do their own thing. Um, with cooperation, I think we'll get a lot better results, and this is a chance for everyone to come in with cooperation and, and get ourselves out there further in space. Um, you know, use Moon as a stepping stone to Mars, also create permanency uh, around the Moon. I think I think it's all... I think it's good stuff. Um, I, you know, I hope they go faster. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going in orbit around the moon. I think that'd be kind of fun. But I don't know if tourism will will make it to the moon soon. Um, they also have to figure out a the radiation that everyone encounters when they go into space, uh, and b the effects on human the human body when you take gravity away. That's still an issue. Um, but we'll get there. We'll figure it out. So, all right, there you go. NASA releasing uh, more detailed plans on what they're calling the Deep Space Gateway and the Deep Space Transport. Yeah. I got to have to work. You got to go do whatever it is you do. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Robert Aki, you're the one.